In three, two, one, fire. There's a lot going on behind the scenes that the audience doesn't know about. Our job is to make it look easy. Jim Souza and his son are out here in the California desert to train for their biggest day of the year. Right now, we're getting ready to stage 400 shows on the 4th of July. Their family runs one of the largest fireworks companies in the world, Pyro Spectaculars by Souza. The sky is the canvas and fireworks is our paint. All this setup is part of a highly technical year-long process that's engineered for a very specific purpose. What we're really trying to do is always improve the wow factor. What can we do to, to get the oohs and the ahs from that audience? It starts in this former Air Force bunker where they store the fireworks behind a four inch thick steel door because, you know, that's a lot of explosives. So what we have in, in front of me here is a sample of the different sizes of shells. We have over a thousand different sizes and varieties here stored in this facility alone. And they range in size from, from three inch, four, five, six inch, eight inch, 10 inch in diameter. And as a rule, you can say that a three inch shell is gonna go times 100 feet or 300 feet into the sky. The same with an eight inch, about 800 feet into the sky. And the way they work is this. The computer on command will ignite this, create a spark. It'll then light this fuse down into the bottom of this aerial shell is about 12 ounces of black powder. And this is the lifting charge. This shell will be placed in a mortar and this will fire off and launch it in the sky. Meanwhile, the time fuse is burned from the outside to the inside. It's lit a bursting charge, and that will open up this shell, light all the colored stars, and illuminate the sky in red, white, and blue. Inside those shells is a combination of old and new technology. The basic component of all fireworks is black powder, and that goes back for hundreds and hundreds of years. To make any firework, you really need a fuel and an oxidizer. Just like in black powder, you have potassium nitrate, and that's the oxidizer. You blend that with charcoal and sulfur, compound that with the right mixtures, you light it and it becomes black powder, so you have a fuel and you have the oxidizers, and that forms the basics of it. Now, to add some colors to it, then you add different compositions. You could take strontium, that'll give you some red, barium's gonna give you green, copper, blue. You add some metals to it, some aluminum, magnesium, you're gonna get some twinkles and glitters with it. And then there's the shape. The two basic types. We're gonna have a ball-type shell like this, which is mostly its origin comes from Asia, and it's gonna be more of a floral shape, and it may have color changing with it. The other is more of the European style that is cylindrical, and in this type, they're gonna have what's called components. It won't be just the stars that we've been talking about, but it may have whistles and torbillions and action pieces going across the sky. Suze's family has been in the fireworks business for more than a century, and they were innovative out of necessity. I can come back to a date in 1969 in San Francisco where my father was out there firing a show by hand with a torch and doing it the way we did it for years and years. In this case, it blew up right next to him, right in, in the mortar. And that caused serious injury to him and his partner. His partner lost his hand. My dad lost the mobility in his hand and got a lot of different burns with that. And then in the hospital that weekend, he said, from this day forward, we're going to pioneer electronic firing. Today, the team uses computers to precisely launch shells in time to the music during their shows. This is our design software, and what we have is a wave file of the music that we're gonna play in this particular show. We have a script that's moving with the music, and every time that it changes is a shell going off in the sky. These little triangles are really an indication of where there is a shell or an, a pyrotechnic effect going off. On the day of any performance, there's still a lot of work to be done by staff, transporting all those fireworks, building mortars, and loading the shells by hand. Then it'll be connected to a, a computer terminal and sent back, tested, and stand by to fire. The anxiety starts three minutes before, and that's when we have the countdown and we're rolling the tape and we're sending out the signal out to the control center. We get to the 10 second countdown, 10, 9, 8, and about four, we've back timed this very first shell to go off, minus four seconds. We can see that the computer has sent out the signal, the computer has received it, it's lit the fuse, it's fired the shell in the sky, and we see it's going, it's going, and going, and on zero, boom show is happening. This 4th of July, another year of work will come down to just 30 minutes of pyrotechnics, over in a flash. 
but Sousa says it's worth it. I don't think that there's any competition. There are drones out there, there's lasers, but nothing can compete with fireworks. Fireworks is a unique language that I have found all over the world. I don't think you can beat that.